Manchester United have officially sacked Eric Ten Hag and appointed Ruud van Nistrooy as interim manager. What else has been said? Who are the likely replacements? What's the other news that's come out since that was announced this morning? Let's run through everything together. Welcome to Man United Review. My name's Jamie. Before we get into it, though, please smash a like on the video and let's run through all the latest news regarding the manager situation um, that will keep you right up to date with everything. Let's get straight into it. Firstly, though, let me know how you're feeling about everything in the comments. Let me know if you think this is the right decision. Let me know if you think it's the wrong decision. I'll share my thoughts at the end once we've gone through all the kind of news and all the updates. I do think, though, that there was... There was an air of inevitability around this um, regarding the start of the season. It's been on the cards for a while. I don't think the performances this season and the results have have helped at all. Um, the rumours have been constantly there. The noise has been constantly there. The one thing that I am surprised of, though, is that they've done it like now, or they've done it that quick. Um, you know, which 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 we'll, we'll kind of run through. So let's go through everything. Um, but let me know your thoughts, though, in the comments. So so first of all, it is official. So this is from Manchester United's official um, official page, saying Eric Ten Hag has left his role as Manchester United men's first team manager. Eric was appointed in April 2022 and led the club to two domestic trophies, winning the Carabao Cup in 2023 and the FA Cup in 2024. We are grateful to Eric for everything he has done during his time with us and wish him well for the future. Rude Van Nistelrooy will take charge of the team as interim head coach, supported by the current coaching team, whilst a permanent head coach is recruited. So that's kind of the official um, information from the official website. So Rude Van Nistelrooy, interim manager, and also confirm that they are looking to recruit a head coach. It doesn't say any more than that. So when we go through all the kind of updates and everything like that as well, because as you can imagine, the press have gone wild with rumours and uh, this manager, this player or ex-player and all these kind of stuff. And I'll bring you up to date with everything when we go through. First and foremost, I suppose I'd just like to, you know, I, I do feel a little bit sad in a way but not surprised um, considering everything when you factor everything in the, the, the poor last season, you know, there was excuses for that though as well, valid ones with the injuries and stuff. But this season, I don't think there's been that many excuses there. Yes, we have injuries, but nowhere near as severe as, as last season, but I don't think the performances have improved. I think there are still, you know, the same issues that were apparent last season are still been kind of creeping in. And again, the, 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 it's not necessarily just the results, I don't think, that have kind of made Ineos make the decision. It's the manner of the defeats. It's the performances. There's not been a consistent two... There's not even been a consistent game this season where we played the same in two halves, and I don't think that's what they were looking for. I always think back to what the Muppeteers were saying is that they just want to see a style of play implemented and they just want to see something that they can kind of get behind and and kind of and, and we haven't seen that. We just haven't seen it. So I'm 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 not surprised. Um and I wish Eric Ten Hag all the best. Do you know what I mean? Like there's not very many managers that come in, win two trophies. We hadn't won a trophy for six years before he came in. Two trophies in two seasons considering the squad that he inherited and the mess that we were in as well. I don't know if he leaves us in a much better shape, but I do think we're in a much better, um, you know, I think there's much better characters around the place in terms of not that many troublemakers behind the scenes. Cause I think when Ten Hag came in, there was a lot of player unrest, a lot of the players that behind the scenes, you think about, about um, all the, all the stories around, you know, players leaking to the media, all of that stuff has really died down uh, since Eric Ten Hag came in. I think he has installed a little bit of discipline um, and yeah, just wish him all the best in, in his future. But I do think the timing was probably right. I think he's kind of ran his course personally, but um, you can let me know what you think in the comments. So let's go for all the latest. Um, so Steve Rawlinson from the Manchester Evening News said a club source has described the decision to sack Eric Ten Hag as, a, as um, difficult and finally sorry, difficult and finely balanced decision, but a collective and unanimous one. The new football structure believes there are no excuses for the current performances. And I kind of agree with that, being honest with you. I do think he's been backed 
been given all the kind of tools and just nothing's really changed for for a while um, in terms of the performances on the pitch still inconsistent same problem still exists so you know that's a fair a fair one in my opinion the Muppeteers had the following to say the board feel they gave Eric Ten Hag the tools to succeed and the time to see improvements um, expectations were not through the roof, but a minimum upward trend was expected. Failing to improve upon last season removed doubts about manager raised during prior injury crisis. So, you know, the Muppeteers kind of confirming what I mentioned there as well. The fact the injuries excuse anyway has been removed, but the performances just haven't got any better. I do think is a reason. And the Muppeteers again saying that we weren't expecting, the, the Ineos don't necessarily expect us to be like, challenging for the title or anything this season they obviously expected it to be way better than what it is currently sat in 14th in the Premier League without a win in the Europa League as well um you know but just like like I said style of play something something to build towards but it's just it's just been a bit of a mess hasn't it let's be fair um so that's interesting update there from the Muppeteers Sky have said that despite Ten Hag um, pointing to injuries and refereeing decisions, including West Ham's late winner on Sunday, there was a general belief that there could be no excuses for the poor start to the season, which is a valid point as well. Sam C, who's a good source, said United wanted to only sack Ten Hag when they had a replacement lined up, but ultimately enough is enough. Um, you know, and it has kind of got to that point. Again, I mentioned it before, there's an air of inevitability around what was kind of coming. That's the the feeling I got over the last couple of weeks, especially since the last international break when he stayed and we were kind of geared up around performances. That's what we were kind of expecting. And yes, we we had a, a good result against Brentford, but the first half wasn't anything to, to write home about. Yes, we won in the end 2-1, but then since then it's just been flat again, hasn't it? And it's it's very, very, you know, it's sad. And it is, but is it a, you know, probably the right decision, I think. Um and then Chris Wheeler said that the players were told about Eric Ten Hag sacking at the at the same time the official announcement was made this morning. So, um, you know, so it's all kind of confirmed. So looking forward, Ruud van Nistelrooy in charge for Leicester on Wednesday. Um, apparently there's not going to be any press conference because Ten Hag recorded a pre-match uh, press conference after the West Ham game. And obviously he's not there anymore, but apparently Ruud van Nistelrooy is not going to be doing a press conference before um, before the game. Be interesting to see, you know, what improvements, what tweaks we can make. You know, it'd be interesting to kind of see his team selection and stuff. So, um, yeah, yeah, one to obviously we'll keep an eye on. Now, in terms of possible replacements, as you can imagine, the media have been going going nuts around this manager, that manager and stuff. So I'll bring you a few of the updates, but it is literally coming out by by the minute almost all the stories and, um, you know, everything, like like the media are just absolutely all over this at the moment. So I might need to do an update a bit later on, so make sure you subscribe for that. But um, Alex Crook from TalkSport, I'd say take with a pinch of salt, but um, said that Manchester United have also shown recent interest in Germany coach Julian Nagelsmann. Thomas Frank is known to have admirers among the United hierarchy. Xavi has held talks about a move. He has a close relationship with Omar Barada from their time at the new Camp. And that's an interesting point as well. I forgot that Barada would have been, obviously from Barcelona days, would have had that kind of relationship with Xavi. I never thought about that when the whole kind of stories around Xavi were leaked out last week that's a really kind of interesting interesting perspective because obviously they will know each other and they'll have a close relationship from his time there as well so that's uh you know that's one to kind of keep an eye on obviously there were loads of reports last week linking us with with Xavi um so we'll need to see how that kind of develops um Sam C again another good source said that Manchester United are going to try their luck and approach Julian Nagelsmann now that would be a good shout out of all the managers out there that aren't in like top jobs to you know I me and then Nagelsmann would definitely be one that I would be I, I think Nagelsmann Amarin would be interesting as well some updates on him I'll bring you in a second um but Nagelsmann is a yeah would, would be a really good choice but can you get him out of Germany when he's just signed a new contract there as well because apparently he wants to stay for the next world cup which is in what 18 months time so um but corner Sam C they're going to try their luck and if you don't you know if you don't buy a ticket you can't win the raffle so fair enough. Um, Richard Fay, decent source, said Julian Nagelsmann, Thomas Frank and Ruman Amram are among the names considered to replace Eric Ten Hag. Uh, Michael Planton, 
not the most credible, but decent, said Ruman Amarim ticks the boxes on Ineos' checklist. Um, checklist. Then any of the possible candidates, he is a strong contender. His age, ability to work within a club hierarchy, and recent track record are seen as attractive qualities for United. Um, Melissa Reddy from Sky said United have drawn up a contingency plan in recent weeks and a list of around five managers have been considered. Ruud van Nistelrooy's interim will give the board time to um, time time to go through a thorough appointment process. That was Melissa Reddy from Sky and Man United have not ruled out formal approach for Oli Gunnar Solskjaer amid the possibility they could um, be restricted to managerial free agents. Imagine that, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer back with Ruud van Nistelrooy. Don't know. Or it never always say never go back, don't they, as well? So um so there's a few of the names kind of kind of linked, but they're, they're the names that have always been linked with us anyway. It's gonna be interesting to see what they do because you know there is a feeling that financially maybe United don't have the money to one pay out Ten Hag, although they've made that decision, so clearly they do have the funds available, otherwise they wouldn't have been able to do it. But then also um, buy, buy somebody out of their contract. I think the news last week was 10 to 20 million to get Frank out of Brentford if they wanted him. I think it's around the same for Amarim. I don't think Amarim would leave sport in this, this time in the season. I don't know if there'd be a compensation package for Nagelsmann as well. So there is like a, obviously we need to wait and see how it develops. But there is like a, a theory kind of going around that if United don't have the cash available, then they are going to look maybe at somebody that's out of work at the moment, like a, a Terzic, um, Xavi, you know, um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Graham Potter, Gareth Southgate. Do you know what I mean? We're going to get all of these rumours over the next, but it's going to be interesting to see what they do do because, you know, do they just stick with Rude for the time being or do they look to get one of those interims in and give him a temporary contract who knows but but again they must have something kind of lined up because from the last international break or even before that they, they would have been looking at contingencies that's what the kind of feeling was after the the kind of big meeting that was announced was that Ineos were going to start looking at contingency plans and looking at other managers under the kind of you know with the the, the the kind of thought that this may happen if things didn't improve and obviously it hasn't they've just decided to kind of go down that route which is fair enough it's one of those where you know I've always been of the opinion if you ten hag out you're right and if you ten hag in you're right as well because you know I don't think it's necessarily been but even my as someone who who supported ten hag and didn't necessarily want us to to sack him and was kind of quite happy to give him a bit more time and give him the kind of tools and the the back in the backroom staff. Do you know what I mean? Change everything above the manager and stuff. Do you know what I mean? That that was my kind of um, feelings towards Ten Hag. Even my patience has been worn thin over the over the way we've started this season because there has just been very little to kind of get behind and to grab onto. Do you know what I mean? Like I said, if, if we were losing games and I could handle it, if we were implementing a style of play, like I'll always go back to um, like one of my mates is a, is a rival supporter. I'll say that. And I remember when, um, when Jurgen Klopp first went into Liverpool, right? He was a Liverpool fan. And um, we were kind of talking about the, the style of play and Jurgen Klopp was like, I'm playing this style of play. And that's it. If I don't have the players to implement it, then they'll get shown up on the pitch or they'll get injured. And then I can weed out all the ones that I do not fit my style of play. And then I can replace them with players that do. And regardless of what happened, he never changed that philosophy and they didn't have a very good first season under Klopp. But, but you could see what he was implementing. And then eventually over time, they got the right players in to fit that system. And then they just kind of went on from strength to strength from there. And I failed to see what we've done under Ten Hag in three years. Do you know what I mean? We've never really implemented a specific style of play where you could go back and say, well, actually, if we recruited these three or four players, they can help us go forward. If anything, we just constantly change from game to game. And it's unsustainable that it is unsustainable. So, um, but let me know how you feel about the whole situation in the comments. And then the final few stories are just regarding about some, what some of the players have, um, or what's going on behind the scenes. So senior Manchester United players have questioned Eric Ten Hag's rotation policy with Marcus Rashford rest, rested after after scoring three times in two games earlier this season. That came from Alex Crook from TalkSport. Again, I would say take that with a pinch of salt, but it's a valid point. I was speaking to my brother-in-law earlier um, when the news kind of first broke, and I was saying like that's one of the most bizarre decisions, I think, that kind of 
maybe was a bit of the catalyst with everything. He, Marcus Rashford was having a good first half, I felt, against Porto. He takes him off at halftime, apparently for rotation when he had a two-week international break coming up. But not just that, played him out of position ever since and then dropped Ahmed Diallo ever since as well. Do you know what I mean? And I just don't understand... Like those sort of things, I just don't understand. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I genuinely don't. Um, and then the next story um, was coming from the Times that they said some players and staff were relieved. Um, were relieved. They had been dis- disconcerned by Eric Ten Hag's recent choices and felt he was giving special treatment to certain players. Eric Ten Hag's authority waned over the summer, partly because United finished eighth but also because Ineos met with candidates to replace him. The players don't listen to him anymore, one locker room insider said recently, and that came from the Times, who are a fairly credible source. You know, so we've got some reports there saying about the players and how they kind of feel, and I do, you know, there'll be some of you out there that will blame the players, and there are players that have been at the club that have done this and down tools with multiple managers. We know who they are. I don't need to name names or anything, right? But I don't personally get the feeling that players have down tools. I personally think that there is a little bit of, you know, some players that will probably feel a little bit hard done by and that there are favoritisms within the squad. I do generally think that that's true. Or I can see it where some players will get picked regardless of form and others, if they have like one bad half, you'll never see them again for the light of day and they'll get replaced by the players that we know have been shit in the past. And and so I do think there is an element of favoritism within Eric Ten Hag and his kind of selection and stuff. Um, I don't personally think that the players have necessarily down tools, though. If this was last season, then I would say, yes, some of those players look like they're downing tools, but I don't necessarily get the feeling with the players they're downing tools. I just don't think they believe in what's happening anymore. I just don't think they believe in the system or they believe that in the manager. I mean, and that's different to downing tools, in my opinion. Um, so maybe that last kind of story from the Times is is a little bit true where they've just kind of, you know, where they've just kind of felt that Ten Hag was undermined and just, just just don't believe in what he's saying anymore. That's the kind of feeling I get from that as well. But you can let me know whether you agree or disagree with that in the comments. Let me know your feelings. Let me know your feelings on the whole situation because that's you up to date with all the latest Man United news um, and manager news. Don't forget to smash a like on the video. On your way out, subscribe to the channel if you are new. See you in the next one.